come, come in with a boom. Go out with a boom, boom. <laughs> That's what it says. Well, it's good to be here today and uh, to be with you. It's good to be here today to uh, relieve you, Pastor, for a day. <laughs> and uh, give him a, I know how it is because I've been, I've been in the, in the, the Lord called me uh, in uh, 1963. And you know, I can't, I can't understand burnouts. <laughs> you better burn up rather than burning out, okay? Because that, that you know, uh, the Lord's not going to change. I'm not a traditionalist now. Uh, as far as, uh, but only, only, the only tradition that's in me is a tradition that the Word of God will never be changed, the Word of God will never be destroyed, and the Word of God is going to stay. Let's pray. <laughs> Father God, in the name of Jesus this morning, I want to thank you. Lord, for another Lord's Day. I thank you, Lord, for these, for these young adults, Lord, that is willing, Lord, to lift up your name, Lord, and lead your children in praise. Lord, I, I think of the 150th Psalm, Lord, when you told, let's just praise the Lord. And, Father, I pray that praise would break out all over the United States of America. And every meeting place this morning through every, every congregation, Lord, because you are our only hope. You're our help. And so, Lord, we depend on you. We place, and Lord, I place this body this morning, I place this vo these vocal cords, Lord, to, to your glory. And I pray, the Lord, that, that we come through just exactly what you would have, Lord, to be spoken today. Not what, not what Merlin wants, but, Lord, what you want, regardless of what it is, you bring it forth. Thank you for all the who are here. I give you praise and glory for that. All that you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. You know what the, you know what the uh, 23rd Psalm said in the last, uh, right down to the last of his, uh, when he was closing out, don't you? He, you know, he said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear what? No fear no evil. And we shall dwell where? Oh, you won't even get to go home. <laughs> <laughs> You, you know, you're not going to get out of heaven. What about that? And we shall all dwell in the house of the Lord. Dave, uh, yeah, that's not what I'm going to preach on, though. That's just a little extra this morning, you know. <laughs> well, uh, anyway, you know, uh, the, when, when, the Lord, when the Lord called me into the ministry and to, to preach the word and prepare to preach the word, well, uh, he, he called me real good. Because I haven't lost my calling yet. And all you young folks and you older people and, and all that's here, you don't never get old. I, mean, I, try to, I try to stress this to every congregation that I stand before. You don't ever get old. The body is the only thing that's got the curse on it. And we're going to get on the other one, uh, the soul, later on. The body's what's got the curse on it. Yeah. <laughs> How, how, how do I get along these 83 years and, and pastor all this, this time, you know, and, and, and still thank you, Lord, for a good sound mind. Thank you, Lord, for a good sound body, you know, uh, and, uh, and, what, and what, what he wants done, uh, you know, and, we, and, and I'll tell you, I'm, I'm here to, to give a, a witness to, to who he is and what he will do and what he's going to do. Okay, now we're going to uh, we're, we're going to go all the way back this morning. We're going to go and and it's not all about me. It's not all about you. It's not all about this building. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And what you do with Jesus in your life. That's what it's all about. So we're going to we're going to bring you up to date on that. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the Gospel according to John and the very first chapter. And the very first chapter in the Gospel of John where we start out way back before anything had ever been brought into existence. I don't care if it's in the sky, earth, planets, or what. 
He carries us back. And this is, this is God's plan now. We're gonna be, this is what we're going to look at. We're going to look at the Father's plan. His plan, plan for what? His plan for salvation. And if you read Ephesians chapter 5 down starting in verse 3, if you want to jot some of these scriptures down, you can. Uh, if, you, if you want to read that, he, and then that third, starting in that third verse, as, uh, as Paul had already introduced himself as being called of the Lord. One of the, one of the, uh, one of the servants of the Lord, and not a servant of man, but a servant of the Lord. And af after Paul did that to the church at Ephesus, you see, well, then he said, now, uh, now I remind you this, that before the foundation of the world, before anything was laid, before, before that, it was predetermined and already planned that people the population of this world would be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Without the shedding of the blood, there is no salvation. Okay, where are we going to go to? He said, in the beginning was the Word. Well, that's all you need right there. You say over in Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning was God. God is the Word, was the Word, and still the Word. He hasn't changed, has he? He won't ever change. He is the Word. Okay? He goes, he goes on to say, and, uh, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him well, there was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shined into darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend, did not understand, did not know, and would not accept. And well, that, I'm going to tell you something. We're living in a generation right now that's walking in darkness. Although the light of the Lord Jesus Christ is shining brighter and brighter and brighter, and before, before the trumpet of, trump of God sounds, and before the church is taken out, before the dead in Christ is, is raised, let, let me tell you there, you are going to see some of the power of God, and you're going to see the Lord raise up some men because people can't stand the pure word of God no more. You know that? You know the reason why? Oh, they don't want to turn this world loose out here. They're living in the days of Noah. Like he said in the 24th chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew when he's giving us there the, the list, you know, of what it's going to be like in the last days. Everybody wants to party. I think we had a good party here, young man. I appreciate that. See, what a, what a party we can have when we, when we, we uh, praising the Lord. Isn't it wonderful? I'm telling you, you can't get a better high. You can't get a high nowhere else. I'll tell you what, when you get in the house of the Lord and you get into praise, I mean, when you really get into praise, let me tell you something. The, the heaven's going heaven's gonna to move. The power of the Spirit of God is going to move. Oh, me. Mm. Lord, thank you. Um, see, he, he, he had pre-planned this before the foundation of the world. He had, he, he had already created angels all the way through the Old Testament up to the New Testament. Well, the, even in the New Testament, angels were still active until Jesus came on, you know, on the scene. They, they were still active because of the announcement of the birth, you know, the announcement of all, all that the angels were bringing these messages, you know, God was sending them and all. Well, uh, well the, we, we know that the, the first creation now that, that, that the Father created, the Creator created, was angels. And even the angels now, and this is the reason why that he had to predetermine because he knew those angels was gonna, wasn't going to uh, uh, commit to him. Some of them wasn't. Yeah, well, he knows not everybody's going to commit to Jesus. You know that. Although he be lifted up, not everybody's going to come to Jesus. But the angels... They sinned against God. There old Lucifer was, 14, uh, 14 7, uh, uh, Isaiah, 
where you, where you read about, you know, Babylon and all there, uh, talking about the, uh, there where he, where, where he wanted, he's going to be more powerful than God. Well, he still wants to be more powerful than God, than, but, uh, but the, the Lord's done stripped him of all his power now and all of his authority. But remember this, that the word has always been. Now, I, I can't explain, and I, my, my mind and my heart cannot understand how it can go all the way back in eternity. Eternity back and eternity forward. You know, that, that, that's uh, just uh, incomprehensible. We can't understand it. We, our minds, our human minds, we do not have the mind of God. We are accumulating the mind of God, as Paul said in chapter 12 of Romans. He said, by the renewing of your mind. That's what has to happen. By the renewing of our mind, now that we're going to understand that, that the creator of of all the universe and everything that has been created and brought into existence, was brought, in, brought into existence by the, the Creator speaking the Word. And Genesis says, as He spoke the Word, the, well, then the Spirit, here, here comes the Holy Spirit. Where's the Holy Spirit at in your life? I hope He's in you. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that's what I tell all the congregations that I go before. If the Spirit of God's not there when I get there, I know He's there when I get there because He's inside of me. Have no question. Have no doubt. Ever, ever since, have you got a testimony? Hey, can you stand up and tell, tell people, tell people uh, uh, what, what the, Jesus has done for you? Can you tell them what the Word has done for you? Can, can you tell them all of this? If you haven't got a testimony, check up now. Check up. Will you, are you bold enough to, to, to testify? The Word of God is powerful. There's power in the Word. Power in the Word. And so therefore we must hear the Word. Paul, Paul said 10, uh, 9, 10 when he's talking about, you know, there. He said, Hear, uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Okay? It's all by the Word. But he said, in, in the beginning was the Word, and now then, uh, the Word, uh, the Word of God, was uh, made flesh, made flesh. But now, all, all this time now, Isaiah, seventh chapter, uh, verse uh, fourteen. There, when when uh, Isaiah the, had had it, after he had experience with the Lord, you know, he had to see the glory. In the sixth chapter of Isaiah, he, you know, Isaiah was just like everybody else. You know, I'm gonna be. Just, well, you couldn't tell tell a you couldn't tell a, a Christian from a from a, the person in the world. They were all, you know, talking the same talk. They were all uh, going to the same places uh, where, where they don't need to be going, and 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 they, they were participating together in, in everything that the world, uh, you know, offers rather than participating in the real truth of God. And uh, this is the reason why in the sixth chapter of Acts there, and when, uh, when Isaiah, uh, excuse, and Isaiah was walking toward the temple, and God, and God showed up. He showed up. And I'll tell you what, when God shows up, people get scared. Did you know that? That's right. People get scared when, when, when God shows up. Because I tell you, when he's, he, he's almighty, he, he's all omnipotent, he's all powerful, he, he, and no one has ever seen the face of God. Over in, uh, when, uh, in the Exodus, in chapter, uh, that's the book of chapter uh, 33, 18 through 23, when Moses, you know, was uh, 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 called up to, to get the commandments and all, and, and all that had happened and everything. Well, he, he said he saw the back of God. He never did. He never did see the face. He saw the back of God. He he wouldn't have been he he wouldn't have been able to, wouldn't have come down off that mountain if he had seen and looked into the face of God. He would not have. So we have to accept that Jesus that uh, now that that uh, before the foundation of the world it was predetermined that the Father 
was going to send Jesus Christ. But he, but he, but, and he, uh, from all the way from Genesis, when he said, let us make man in our own image, that's in the plural. So then the plural there, that tells us that Jesus was there then. And so, and so now, uh, when, when Jesus now it was being identified in the Old Testament through Isaiah, is that Emmanuel, Emmanuel, do you know who Emmanuel is? God with us. God with us. The Emmanuel. It was prophesied years before the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Years. How did he, how did he know? Well, let me tell you. The Father told him. The Lord told him just exactly what to, what to tell the people. And, and thank God it's recorded for this generation today. And we still have it recorded and we can know the truth. You see, we can know the truth. And so, uh, he, he also in uh, Isaiah 8, 10, there where he, where he uh, here again, he, he, as, he was, as he was speaking of Emmanuel, well, not only did, uh, did he speak of, but he also, the Father revealed to him that he was going to be the Messiah. The Messiah was going to be. And uh, would come. Not only did they uh, uh, recognize the, and, and, and preach the message that, they, that uh, the Redeemer would come. He would redeem, you know, to redeem us is what he's going to, going to do. So we've got to go all the way back to before anything had, was ever brought into existence. Before anything brought into existence. And can't you imagine how much difficult it was when uh, the Hebrew people, now this is the reason why that the, the Hebrew people, the Jews, are the, are the special uh, called out people that we know today. It's simply because they are the ones who first believed. They are the ones who first committed to the Lord, like Abraham. God told him, said, get, your, get yourself out of, from the midst of your kindred, and you're going out to the land of where I tell you, and I'm going to show you some things. And he said, by, by your faithfulness now, I am going to, I, there's many, many people that's going to be redeemed, and, and going to be many added to the kingdom of God. <laughs> and uh, so that's uh, that, th this is this is what's happening, people, in this day that we're living. It has been happening ever since Jesus was born in, in the, uh, into this world. But what uh, what uh, uh, John is bringing to us here, he's he's just reminding us, without without Jesus, there wouldn't be there wouldn't be any, any life. I'm talking about eternal life. There would be no eternal life. Because uh, without, without him, because this pro with the promises that God has made, and he fulfilled all of his promises. As, uh, as, uh, so we, we, we know that no one has seen God at any time. You, you don't even see me up here. <laughs> you say, how's that, bud? <laughs> you just see the actions. Because one of these days, I'm going to slip out of this body. I'm going to slip out of it. And I'm going to go to be with Jesus. And my prayer is that everyone in this auditorium today can say, praise God, I know that I'm going to slip out of this old body and I'm going to go to be with Jesus. Amen. That's our hope. <laughs> uh, that's the reason why I tell you now, don't be caring. Yeah, uh, you want me to tell you how to take care of the body? Take care of it like Jesus tells us to. Was I putting, yeah, I was 26 years old when I got saved. When I accepted Christ. Was I putting things in my body that I shouldn't put in there? Yes, I was putting things in there. I, I was putting that old smoke down in there and just burning my lungs up, you know. Uh, and, uh, and, and so, and, and the wife, she was doing the same thing, you know, back then. We were lost. We were just as lost as we could be. <laughs> but keep, I'm, I'm glad that he delivered me and her from, uh, from that habit of smoking, that addiction of smoking, 
when he did. I'm telling you, this is, this is what we do adds years to our life. What we do adds years to our life in the Lord. Now, the Lord tells us what to do, but he's not going to make us do it. He tells us if we depend on him, well then, he will fulfill whatever it is that is needed. He's not going to fulfill your wants. And well, he has a lot of, a lot of hours. I know, you know, he has given us uh, more than we need. He's gone beyond that for all of us, hasn't he? Okay. So, uh, so, so now the reality here is that God, the Father, can become visible through the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Through the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Over in the 14th chapter of the Gospel according to John, you know, he goes on down in there to tell us that. If you have seen Jesus, you have seen the Father, right? That's what he said over there. You read the 14th chapter of the Gospel according to John, you'll find that out. That uh, if you've seen Jesus, if you met Jesus, you've met the Father. And, when, uh, and this is the only way that we're going to see the Father in eternity is in that glorified body that Jesus is in. I mean, the glorified body that Jesus is the Father's in. That's put it right back. I got to get in my car full my horse there. Uh, and so uh, th th this is, is an absolute fact. Some people can't understand. Where is Jesus at now? You believe that? Okay. There's, two, uh, there's a father and a son there. And he's there, isn't he? Okay. Who, who are we going to go be with when we leave here? We're going to be with... We're going to be with God, but who are we going to see? We're going to see Jesus. We are going to see Jesus, and when we see Jesus, we're going to see the Father. Because we're going to see the Father's actions through him, just like we saw the Father's actions through him here on this earth and all of the miracles that he uh, wrought before all the, the, the people, and we have it recorded in the Bible. This is where you need to get to get your information. You need to get in the Bible. You need to get in the Word. You need to read the Word and let the, let the Lord speak to you. You wonder why that we face in so many trials, troubles, and, and tribulations. Well, it comes not because we do what the Lord asks us to do, but that we do what we want to do. And the only, the only time I ever get in trouble is when I... When I tell God, God, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do it like I want it. Not like you want it. Well, I, we all get in trouble, don't we? Because now, uh, the light shined into the darkness. Okay? When the creation, before creation, everything was dark. Everything, there was no light. Satan had been kicked out of heaven into outer darkness. Kicked out of heaven, put out of heaven into outer darkness. Him and all, it was, well, I believe one third of the angels that, that was put out with him. And these are, the, these are the demonic forces that trouble you and me today. Is these fallen angels that uh, was kicked out of heaven. He said, let there be light. Aren't we glad we got light? We look for it every morning, don't we? Isn't it amazing how, and you know, the Lord's got light here. He's got darkness over here. He's got cold over here. He's got heat over here. And all we do, and he set this thing in rotation, people. Listen, listen he set this thing in rotation for seasons, and sometimes we get cold, and sometimes we get hot. Don't we? Sometimes we're in darkness and sometimes we're in light. We're in darkness at what we call every night. We're in light every day. But now when he comes into your life, you got the light of the Lord of life and the reality of what he's trying to tell us and what he's trying to teach us. 
that he is the life. He is the light of life. He's the joy of life. He, he's the redeemer of, of the soul. The soul has got a curse on it until, now getting back to where he's talking about the body. The body cannot, the curse will never be re removed on the body. You're going to get old. Just like me, I'll bring you a picture, show you when I was 30, and I'm a whole lot uglier now than I was then. <laughs> That's right. You know, you know, you know uh, all, of us, all of us seniors are still beautiful, you know. Amen. <laughs> but the thing about it is you look at our pictures and you see how the skin and everything has changed, can't you? <laughs> well, it, it's a big change, I tell you. Because <laughs> I can bring it, show it to you. <laughs> okay, okay, now this is, this is what we got to do. We have got to become an absolute, Believer that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We've got to become an absolute believer that Jesus Christ is the sacrificial lamb for sin. He did away with the old system and the new covenant. And this is what the old could not accept is the, is the new covenant that Jesus, the Father in him, was bringing on earth because he had, he had uh, sent a message to the people that it was going to happen, and let me tell you, it happened. He is real. The Father is real. Jesus is real. The Holy Spirit is real. <laughs> and then... And uh, when we sing that song, you know, how do, we, how do we know? How do we know that he's real? Because he lives within our hearts and our souls and our inner being. He changes us. And let me tell you something. I don't know uh, if y'all get, get the joy out of it as, as much as whenever the Lord, you know, uh, gets, gets to working, you know, and, and the Holy Spirit gets to moving. I had, had a, uh, a chiropractor in one of the congregations one time. He said, he said, Brother Marsh, he said, you just need to come down to my office. He said, I could really fix you up. I could, I could make you feel so good. And I said, Dr. Mitchell, I appreciate your offer, son. But I said, the Lord gives me all of my adjustments. I said, he walks up and down my backbone. I said, he walks out in my arms. I said, he takes care of my joints and all this kind of stuff. I don't have to go to a chiropractor to get my joint to get, to get that good feeling. I don't have to take drugs to get that good feeling. I don't have to take alcohol to get a good feeling. I don't have to fool you. And you don't, Christians. Let me tell you something. You don't have to fool with the mess. You're putting poison in your body to kill yourself when you're putting drugs and when you're putting alcohol. When you're, I'm talking about bad drugs. Do I take, do I take any, any of the, yeah, if I get sick, I take it. <laughs> but if, I don't, if I'm not sick, I don't take it. I got, I got, in fact, most of the time I don't even take a full prescription. I want to get rid of it as quick as I can. And if I go in there, you know, well, <laughs> the doctor, he look, every time I go for a checkup, I know you don't like medicine. I said, no, sir, I don't. <laughs> Keeping our temple clean. Why do we keep our temple clean? Because it's a dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. It's a dwelling place of Jesus. It's a dwelling place of the light of life. It's a dwelling place of God the Father. It's a dwelling place. We, this is the temple. This building is not the temple of the Holy Spirit. We only come together under the leadership of the Holy Spirit to worship and to praise Him who is one that we worship. I'm telling you, sometimes we get it all messed up. We see a, a building as a, it's a holy place simply because it has been dedicated to the glory of God. And that's the only reason that it's a holy place. It has been built so that you, so people can come in and so you can bring lost people in. And when they hear the word of God, praise God, pray that they'll hear the word and they will accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. Ooh, you know, I could preach all day, but I'm not going to do that. I, I'm going to let you go here in a few minutes. Is everybody still awake? Everybody still awake? Okay, okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
Is it clear enough? Is it simple enough? You know, one time I wanted to be like, just like Billy Graham. Oh, I got some of his sermons, you know, after I got out of school and I got, no, I got them so sermons out there and, and like I say, all, all preachers, I love, I love all preachers and I'm not jealous of them because praise God, I, they're, the, they're the Lord's uh, people and, and, uh, and so therefore I have no jealousy whatsoever and, and to, toward any of them because they, they, they are, are, are God's uh, uh, called out uh, servants to serve him and to, and to carry the word and plant the seed. And to till and to, and to work, to work the soil. And so now then, we have to let this light come inside of us. And, lie and, 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 and so we can see right from wrong. Destruction. When it's coming to us. How to, how to, how to turn from the destruction that destroys our bodies. To turn from destruction that, uh, you know, that, that is going to to ruin our testimonies. Turn, turn, turn from destruction and turn back to the Lord and to the Word of God and be a law-abiding citizens and be, and be true to Him and be Christians and be witnesses. And to be witnesses. You know, this is what the, all about, what the Last Supper is all about. And we're going to observe this here shortly. Is that Jesus, all He went through now, all that Jesus went through. And he took our beatings. He took our criticism. He took, he took everything for us. He said, he said that uh, as Christians, you carry your burdens needlessly. If anything is bothering you, you need to turn it over to the Lord Jesus and let him carry it for you. And wait on him to work it out. You know, the, the, the Lord has to do. We're powerless. You're powerless. Unless you have the person and the power of the Holy Spirit in there. That's like, that's like I've always told them at, uh, at the congregations. When I go there, to, the, to a congregation, I, and, and just about everyone that I've ever been to, they just had a big fight. And, oh, boy, that was my calling. <laughs> that was my calling. Do you, do you know, you know but, but like I tell the people, I say, hey, you know what? The Lord said he would add to the church. He didn't say the pastor is going to add to the church. He didn't, he didn't say that the, that the congregation was going to add to the church. He said the congregation is going, not going to be ashamed. They're going to get out there and witness. You're going to bring the lost in. I tell you, back in the, back in the 60s and 70s, we were here. And I'll tell you one thing, uh, everything was just beginning to boom in the, in the last of the 60s. Salem Road is just beginning to build uh, houses on, on that stretch of road uh, from uh, 51 over to 84. And, uh, and, and, and it began beginning to grow. And not only that, but the Spirit of God was moving in this area. I mean, He was moving. I've had down at the uh, Pea River, we didn't have a bad street. But I've had 15 to 16 candidates at one time lined up, and what a beautiful sight it was. For me to get out there, we had a little sandbar down just below the bridge, and that's where we baptized that. Are we baptized? How many are we baptizing now? How many, how many are we witnessing to? How many are we sharing Jesus with? Are we ashamed of Jesus? If we are ashamed of Jesus here, he's going to be ashamed of us whenever we face him. When we face Jesus, if we're ashamed of him here, because he laid his life down for us. Remember, before the foundation of the world, he predetermined that we would be adopted back into the family of God. And don't down just a little bit there in John there, he said he gives us too the right to become the sons and daughters of God. The right to become the sons and daughters of, 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 the, of the Father. Are we, do we know today that we have truly and, and without any question or doubt about our salvation, about our relationship to the Lord? If it is, you need to... Talk to someone. 
or either where you at, ask Jesus to forgive you for your sin of, of unbelief and put it under his blood. And when you put it under his blood, every sin that you ever committed is washed out. Washed out. Why? Because of what we are fixing to experience right here.